Today I'm going to show you how I transformed my six armies from all of these random cases into this. Stay tuned for my ultimate magnetic storage guide and it's coming right up. Necrons! Nick speaking and welcome to this video and if you're new to the channel and you want to learn about Necrons and more then please subscribe and turn on all notifications so you don't miss an upload. Okay so today I'm going to share my experience and all of the tips and tricks that I've learnt along the way to magnetizing my six armies into storage boxes. Of course Necrons being my biggest army and one that we'll be focusing quite heavily on today. Now I've been collecting Warhammer 40k miniatures for around 20 years and as you can see I've got an array of different cases, some of them just, well, cardboard boxes. When I first started in the hobby I had a bit more disposable income and I bought some genuine Games Workshop cases. I've also bought some custom cases, the black ones here at the bottom. I also have a number of camera cases which are pretty decent for putting miniatures in uh, as long as you have the foam. I've also got this camera case here which I used to keep my ghost arcs in. I've got an A case which is a magnetic case uh, which I was given to review on the channel which started my thought process about, well, magnetic cases. Now Necrons have had quite a few new miniatures released over the last year or so. One thing which is very noticeable about Games Workshop's new releases is whilst the miniatures are looking more and more awesome, they're also getting a little bit more, well, fragile, let's say. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the plastic, it's very strong, but some of the sculpts give you very spindly bits, which even in a dedicated foam case, have the potential to break whilst moving. And that's where I thought a magnetic system would be a lot better. If you can have it so that the miniature is secure but not touching anything, then of course nothing's going to break. So with all of the new miniatures released and my collection getting bigger and bigger and no matter how much you plan, when you buy a case, you never seem to have enough room in that case. I thought, now is the time to magnetize all of my miniatures into boxes, especially as I'm going to be moving house very soon. So over the last few months I've been sorting all of my armies out and this is the results. Yes, I do have some Games Workshop boxes as well. However, the majority of my miniatures are in these boxes. Now I'm going to break this video down into three sections. I'm going to have a chat about the actual boxes and then I'm going to have a chat about the magnetic material on the bottom of the boxes and then finally a chat about the magnets on the bottom of the bases. However, some of this will intertwine with each other, so it's worth watching the whole of the video. I'm also going to share how I solved a lot of the issues which I had along the way. In some cases, not being able to actually magnetize the miniature at all, but still getting them into the boxes. So first of all, let's have a close look at the boxes themselves. Okay, so let's talk about boxes. Now, of course, there's an array of different boxes available to you. I drew from my previous experience where I bought a few, well, fairly cheap plastic boxes, and to be fair, they haven't lasted very long. So durability was the first thing on my list. Now when I first looked at getting boxes, my original idea was to have much bigger boxes than I actually got, probably maybe twice the size as I thought I'd get loads of miniatures in there. However, there was a reason why I went for these smaller boxes and again, drawing from experience of, well, buying cases in the past. Now there's nothing worse than having something which you're happy with, something which you've worked hard to do, and then in the future you can no longer get those items. And I didn't want to go for a storage box where at some point in the future I wouldn't be able to get them for when I expand on my boxes. 
So I wanted to get my box from a well-known reputable company that would be making these boxes for a very long time. And actually that's why I chose these smaller boxes which are A4 size boxes because well let's face it, they're never going to discontinue an A4 box. If it was a slightly bigger box, you know, unusual size, then they probably would at some point maybe discontinue it. But I just can't see them ever discontinuing an A4 box. So that's why I went for an A4 size. However, it is very clear that even just with A4 size, you can get a lot of miniatures in there, especially if you're very clever. I've actually magnetized miniatures to my lid and inside the box. In this one, I've got 70 miniatures on 25 millimeter bases. You can get 60 miniatures in there on 32 millimeter bases. All safe and sound, none of them touching each other and in quite a small box. So A4 size is what I went for. So in the end, I went for the really useful box system, which is a fantastic system. It has these handles so you can clip the lid on. The lid and the actual box is very high quality plastic. It's very durable. Not only that, but there's a cutout in the top of the lid so that you can stack the boxes like so. And as you can see, I've got a bigger one here. I went for the A4 size, like I said, because, well, it's going to be future proof and also, there are other reasons, including the magnetic material on the base, which we'll talk about more later. But A4, it gets a good amount of models in, and it's also pretty stackable, which is really nice. And of course, with the high quality plastic, we can stack these knowing that the boxes and the miniatures are all secure. So having worked out that these were the boxes that I wanted to get, well of course I had to then find out where I was going to get them from. I did a lot of research. You have your usual places of course like Amazon and eBay. You can even buy these direct from the really useful box company uh, which I believe is in America which I tried to do and they had a sell on when I bought my boxes which made the boxes fairly good value for money however there was a massive shipping fee on them so in the end I got them from a UK based company called Ryman's. Now it's fair to say that the prices tend to fluctuate depending on when you go onto the website as I said, I bought mine from ryman.co.uk, which I will link you up to in the description below. It's not an affiliated link, it's just a normal link to where I got these boxes from. Now, these ones here, which are classed as 4 litre, they're not classed as A4 boxes, which is a bit confusing. They do it in the amount of litres. However, if you scroll down the page, you can check the dimensions to make sure you are getting A4 boxes. So yeah, these are 4 litre and you can buy them in pack quantities currently of 9 uh, for £35, which works out at £3.89 a box. Not too bad. Now this one is obviously a bigger one. This is the 9 litre one. Now these bigger boxes are also available in pack quantities. Nine of these come in at £44 currently. I actually paid £39 for mine, but £44, which works out at £4.89. Obviously, if you just buy three of them, it gets more expensive per box. So just under £5 and just under £4 for the boxes. Both of these boxes seem to be available from pretty much anywhere, but like I said, for me in the UK, Ryman's seemed to be the best place. I had great service with their delivery. I could rearrange the delivery times and yeah, it was really, really good. Now there is another option for these boxes, in particular the 9 litre one. It's called the 9 litre XL. It's basically exactly the same on the bottom, but the lid is slightly different. The lid is extended out. So when you put it on, it actually goes on like this, which actually was a very useful size. However, Ryman didn't have those on their website when I was ordering my boxes, although I noticed today that they actually do have them. If you can get some of those boxes, I think they would be quite useful. There are some models which, well, just don't quite fit in one of these boxes. Let's say these 
pieces of Necron terrain, they just don't quite fit, so having a box which is slightly bigger would, as I said, be really useful. However, um, what I did, because I couldn't get hold of these boxes and I didn't want to pay the huge shipping fee buying them direct from really useful box, is I got some 18 litre boxes which just slide in. So this is an 18 litre XL. So you can see here they've actually got the lid which actually has the massive drop down section which means I can get these taller models in there but not only that upon measuring of course before I bought them I can get my monoliths in this box. Now of course uh, this box here is more expensive so this one came in at uh, I bought three for £41.97, which works out about £14 a box. Not too bad, you're not going to need many of these massive boxes. I bought three and I filled the three up, well, sort of. There's a bit of room left in this one for an expansion of my miniatures. And that was the three sizes I bought. So I bought the 4 litre, the 9 litre, which is great for the medium sized miniatures. I've got my reanimators in there, the Nightbringer, the Deceiver, I've got my Scorpec Destroyers and Scorpec Lords and some of the bigger HQs that wouldn't go into a smaller box. But actually there's quite a bit of room here so potentially in the future I could magnetise the lid and have some miniatures on here and have them on the top. And then of course I've got the very big boxes there for, well, things like the monolith and my uh, pylon, my seraptic and some of the other bigger models which we'll look at later in the video. Okay, so that's the boxes themselves. So now let's have an in-depth look at the material on the bottom of the boxes where we're going to magnetise our minis. Okay, so we've got our boxes and it's time to magnetise the bottom of them. Now, if you didn't go for this particular box system, there are some alternatives. I know that some people use baking trays, so you just have to put the magnets onto the models and then the tray is obviously already magnetised and I think some of those trays even have lids, although I don't think they're stackable. But, like I said, there's many reasons why I went for this box system, stackable, durable, etc. Now, the advantage of going for an A4 size box is that most of the magnetising material that you purchase is in A4 size, obviously very useful. Having said that, this box is slightly bigger than A4, which is understandable because, well, if you had a pack of A4 paper in here and it was A4 size exactly, you wouldn't be able to get your hand in to actually get the paper. So it's actually slightly longer than A4. Now the first thing we're going to talk about is this. This is a brushed stainless steel A4 board. I got mine off of eBay from the Multi Metal Shop. Links in the description below for all of the products I talk about. Now this came in at £5.32 when I bought four of them. So that was the maximum multi purchase cost. That's not exactly cheap, especially when I needed so many of them. So the alternative was this, which is a flexible magnetic sheet. And I got this from the magnet shop, again from eBay. These came in, I bought 20 for £34.95, which worked out at £1.75 a sheet, so a lot cheaper. The other advantage with this sheet is I can cut it, which I don't have the facilities to cut a stainless steel sheet, which gave me the advantage that when I put it into the box, which is slightly bigger than A4, I can put it to one side and then get another sheet and cut a strip. Then I have the hold of the base magnetized. So I actually went for these sheets for the majority of my boxes, however not all of them which we'll talk more about later. Now these are all available in many different places but like I said I did some research and it was a bit of a minefield and in the end I went for these from the magnetic shop because they had some really good reviews. Apparently the most positively reviewed magnetic sheet ever. That's how they described it. It is 0.75 thickness, so 
fairly thick but not too thick that it's going to interfere with any of our models heights. Right so that's the sheets and where I got them from but what about actually getting these sheets into the bottom of the boxes. Okay so let's talk about the flexible sheets first which I used on the majority of my boxes mainly because well it was a lot cheaper but also for another reason which I'll talk about in a minute. So we can buy these sheets either with a self adhesive bottom or without self adhesive where we glue the sheets in ourselves. Now that is the system that I went for. I was a bit dubious about well self adhesive sort of sticky tape um, on them. So yeah I went for the gluing type and the glue that I used was the super glue from Gorilla and this is the gel glue which is quite a nice thick glue. Now there was quite a big learning process regarding gluing these sheets in. The first one is to make sure that you are in a very well vented area. Ideally, if you can, do this outside because it can affect your nose and your eyes if you don't. The other thing is not to use too much super glue. When I first started using this, I was literally sort of pushing it in all over the place and gluing it in. And yes, it glued. But I worked out very quickly you don't need as much glue. In the end I was doing sort of spots going around uh, this base and then obviously gluing it into place. Now because of the way super glue dries it does take 24 hours to dry. If you put the lid on the box whilst it is drying you'll end up with white sort of burn marks all around the plastic. So make sure it dries for at least 24 hours in a well ventilated area. I actually let mine dry for around 48 hours just to make sure. But the advantage of these ones of course is that we can glue this down the side and then we can cut out a little strip and glue it to the other area so the whole of the base is magnetised. And if I bring in one of my other boxes here where you can see I've got my warriors, both plastic ones and metal ones, I'm covering the whole of the base and making as much use of the space as possible. Like I said you can even cut some down and put it in the lid etc. So yeah it worked really really well. However it didn't work for every single miniature. So yeah in comes the metal sheets. Okay, let's talk about these metal sheets because there's a few things I want to say. Now, there's just a backing there which obviously peels off and gives you a nice uh, side to it. However, just put it here for now. So, one concern of mine regarding these metal sheets is that they do magnetise very well. They're very powerful. Now, if I bring in these miniatures again, the Warriors, Powerful magnets, whilst obviously will really secure your miniatures onto the base, well, this model here just got one magnet on and it's really, really magnetised. However, this Necron Warrior is quite a fragile miniature. He's basically just got one leg glued to the base and one of my main concerns is breaking the model, actually trying to take the model off because if I grab him and pull him, it's so well magnetised that I'm going to just pull that model off. So that was one thing that I didn't like about these magnetic strips. Obviously if you've got metal miniatures, I mean this has got two magnets on, again it, you know, it works really well and potentially with metal miniatures it's not going to make too much difference. And of course, metal miniatures on this type of material isn't quite as magnetic, so that's why I've got two magnets on the bottom of this uh, miniature, being metal and heavier, and only one magnet on the bottom of this miniature, which we'll talk more about in a second. However, back to these metal ones. There were some miniatures which I just had to have on the metal base because well, they didn't work very well on the flexible ones. Mainly some of my heavier, uh, top heavy Tyranid miniatures. So for example here, 
I've got my Ravana in there, my old school guard, and I've got my uh, old school metal uh, lictors. And I've got two magnets on the bottom, and they're magnetising onto the metal uh, quite well. Now, to magnetise these miniatures into this box, I'd have to have a good number of magnets on the base, and even then, they tended to be top heavy, where obviously they're made of metal and they're quite skinny and still quite heavy at the top. So I use the metal uh, sheet for this, and as you can see, I put the magnetic sheet over to one side, glued it in, and then I put a strip of the flexible sheet down the side for some of the miniatures that, well, I didn't actually need the metal for, which in this case is the little spore mines. Indeed, I actually put a little strip of that onto the lid so that I can get all of my spore mines in one place. Now, to glue those metal sheets into the bottom of the box, well, that was another story altogether. So, first of all, I tried super gluing the sheet into the bottom of the box, put some super glue in there, pushed this into place, uh, put a weight on the top so that it was flat, and obviously let it fully dry. Now, the sheet itself is fairly heavy, and the box is, well, pretty flexible. And I found what's happened, as soon as I put some pressure on the bottom of the box, it just took the metal sheet away from uh, the uh, base, so it didn't glue basically very well. I came up with another alternative. I tried to use some green stuff. I put some blobs of green stuff all over, and then I pushed it into the green stuff. It seemed like that was going to work really well, but sadly it didn't work very well. I had a chat with um, some friends of mine. I know that um, one channel, Nick from Old Average Brit Gaming, he uses, uh, what's it called, JB Weld. He used JB Weld on some of his and he even said that uh, some of his have come off. So I had a really good think about it and I came up with a solution which does work, although it's a little bit more expensive. So what I did is I bought some of this. This is some double-sided acrylic foam tape. So basically it's the highest quality double-sided sticky tape that you can get. So they use this to stick on car bumpers, um, etc. So I got this, put it onto the bottom of this metal plate, and then I pushed it into place in the box no super glue needed, which meant I didn't have to wait 48 hours for it to fully dry, and I didn't have to worry about ventilation. And you can see the strips on the bottom of the box there, and that is stuck in absolutely perfectly. So that's how I got my uh, magnetic steel sheets onto the bases. However, I definitely prefer these because A, they're less expensive, B, you can cut them quite easily, and C, I can adjust the magnetization power by how many magnets I put on the base of the miniature. So, as an example, in this one I've got some of my bigger tyranids. I do have one of the sheets on the base, so I've got some little gants, etc. there, but inside I've got my big monsters, and some of these are actually made of metal, but still magnetising on there quite well, and the way I've done that is by adding more magnets to the base, actually. Quite a few magnets, to be fair, uh, but, as I said, the way to do it is to start with a few magnets and then gradually add the magnets as you go. Like this one's got five magnets on the base, for example. And if we go to my Necron box, which I've got just here, once again, I've got an array of different miniatures, all different weights, and they all need a different amount of magnets. I've got the Scorpec destroyers, which need just two, and then I've got the Deceiver, metal model, that needs five, and then my Nightbringer, that needs seven. I just added the magnets as I needed for the individual miniatures, and that's how I managed to use the cheaper material, 
but still have the miniatures magnetised. Now yes, of course, the more magnets you use, the more money you need for those extra magnets. However, in the long run, it was cheaper to buy more magnets than to buy those uh, metal sheets, and indeed, more of this tape, which incidentally, I think this was about nine pound. There is a link to it in the description below. This is a 20 millimeter tape, which they do do a 10 millimeter tape, which of course will be a bit cheaper, but I went for the bigger one because, well, I was experimenting. I think the 10 millimeter probably would work, but obviously this just gives you more area to stick it. Okay, so that's it about the bases of the boxes. So let's have a look at magnetising the actual miniatures. Okay, so let's talk about magnets on the bottom of the bases. Now, the one thing to note here that the depth of the bases isn't always equal. There is a variety of different depths on the different bases. Now, I found the perfect magnet size to do all of the bases is this one here, which is an N52 5 by 2 millimeter sized magnet. So that's 5 diameter and 2 millimeters depth. N52 is the strength. I get all of my magnets from a company called Guys Magnets. Link in the description below. The more magnets you buy, the cheaper they get. Uh, but for around 500 magnets, it's about 50 pound. Now I've seen a few people use three millimeter depth magnets. However, when I tested three millimeter on the majority of my bases, it actually stuck out, it wasn't flush. So I went for the two millimeter one and to make the magnets flush, I'm going to use green stuff. This actually gives me the ability to really make it flush because I can squash it into place. So what I did is I mixed up some green stuff. If you're not familiar with green stuff, then I do have a tutorial all about it, which I'll link you up to at the end of this video. However, I made a board of green stuff up, and then got one of these magnets, and I put it onto my little metal file. This metal file has a foam handle, which means I can magnetize it onto the foam handle, but it's not really, really strong. It just comes off easy. So I made a green ball up, I pushed it onto the base, and then I put some super glue onto the magnet, and I pushed the magnet into the green stuff, taking the file away and leaving the magnet into place. This allowed me to squash the magnet down, like so, just give it a bit of a wiggle on a flat surface, and then the magnet was totally flush with the base. And once fully dry, I then had a magnetized miniature. Now I know what you're saying. You're saying, hey Nick, what about that green stuff on the base? Is it going to stick enough? Well, my answer is yes. On the flexible magnetic sheets, it sticks in perfectly. On the metal one, where it's a much tougher uh, fix, you may find that the magnet will pull off where the green stuff is. Now, if that does happen, all you have to do is get some super glue and super glue back on the magnet with the green stuff. We've already made it flush, so it's literally just a case of gluing it on. So that's what I found, and to be fair, I would say on this metal material here where it is extra strong, I would say probably about 50% of the magnets I actually had to glue on the green stuff after it was dried. However, on this material here, it's very, very low. I think I only had about two magnets maybe that came off, not many at all. So that's how I did it. And as I said, to build up the strength of the magnetization, I just added more magnets. So one magnet on a little plastic miniature, uh, two magnets on that small metal one, or two magnets on a bigger plastic miniature. The Nightbringer here with, well, seven magnets, and that magnetizes fine on here and doesn't fall off when I tilt the case. And then we have the Silent King, which has, well, a good amount of magnets, as you can see. But again, he magnetizes onto this sheet, no trouble at all. However, there were some miniatures which I had to be creative with when it came to storing them in these boxes. And there's various reasons for that. So 
Let's have a look at those reasons, how I solved them, and hopefully this will give you some ideas when you're trying to get your awkward miniatures into your new storage solution. Okay, so the first issue that I had was on well, these two models, my Oricon conversion and my Oricon empowered Catan. The reason why I've got an issue with both of these models and some of my others is because the base is not hollow. This one has a coin glued into it to stop it from toppling over. And this one is a resin base which is just flat on the base. So I had to solve these issues. Now this one here wasn't too much of an issue for me because the coin is actually magnetic. Not magnetic enough just to put it onto the magnetic sheet by itself but magnetic enough that I could do this. So just bring in my box. I've got a one millimeter by five millimeter magnet glued to the base of this box. And now Oricon glues or sticks very nicely onto that magnet without coming off. Problem solved. This guy here, I had to get my pin vise and drill some holes into the base. I drilled three millimeter holes and I used some three by two millimeter N52 magnets. I've actually got three magnets in there and he now glues into position like so. Problem solved. However, I've got one army which are all on resin bases and that's my Space Wolves. And that's why I actually didn't magnetise my Space Wolves into those boxes. I just left it in my original Games Workshop uh, case. Drilling holes in all of those resin bases would be a lot of work. Plus, they sit in here quite well. And well, to be honest with you, I don't intend to expand my range of Space Wolves. I just want to paint or finish painting what I've got in here then that will be it. So I left my Space Wolves in their original case. However, some of my other miniatures that had resin bases, I did drill the holes out. So my Forge World avatar there, I drilled, well, four holes out on that one, but I'm magnetizing it into this box, which has the metal base. So obviously I didn't need as many magnets if I was magnetizing that onto the flexi base, and obviously I'd need a lot more, and that'd be a lot more drilling. I also have this miniature here, on one of the really old, I think these Acadian bases. It's quite a flat base, but it's got pre-cut holes. So I just put a load of three by two millimeter magnets into that base, and that fits once again on this metal base like, really, really well. So, that's how I solved those issues. Now the other issue that I had was models which are on flying bases like Necron Destroyers. Now my flying bases are all magnetized. So what I did is I got the five by one millimeter magnets and magnetized them onto the bottom of the base allowing my destroyers to magnetize onto them. I've got my six rows here these spaces are for three more, which I'm going to be doing. And then I've got some heavy destroyers in there as well. Now, I have to admit, if I was going to do this again, I would actually put one of those uh, flexible magnetic strips to the bottom, just because it's easier to glue the magnets to the strip than it is to this plastic base that was a bit tricky. So if you do this system, then I'd actually recommend putting a magnetic strip down first. Now some of the other miniatures with flying bases aren't flat like those destroyers are to magnetize flat onto the uh, bottom of the base. So I had to come up with some other ideas. Got some here for you. So in here I used some of the surplus foam that I had from my old cases to give me another system. Cutting the foam into the right sizes, I've got my heavy uh, metal old destroyers in here and some of my heavy destroyers and destroyer conversions. There's enough room as well for when I get my new squad of Lockhurst destroyers which will go in there as well and as I said I've just got them foam padded just like so and well I can still turn these upside down they're well protected and a job done. And then in this case We've got 
what have we got? Aha, yes. We've got my old Tomb Spiders, the Canoptic Spiders, which actually I haven't magnetised any of those bases, so they just sit into the foam tray, which I cut up to give me the holes for the miniatures, and I've got my very fragile Ford World Acanthrites in there. But once again, with this in place and the lid in place, these are perfect in this box. The key thing is when you're doing this foam insert is to not have too much foam so that you really squash the foam down. The pressure needs to be just very light on the miniatures. And then finally, another example of a flying base which is very difficult to get uh, magnetised. That's the tomb blades. However, tomb blades fit very well into these foam inserts. I, the, at the moment I've got the magnetised sections and the bases in here, but take those out, I've got enough room for another two units of tomb blades, giving me uh, three units of nine, and then these magnetised bits will go in another box. Like this one where I've got all of my Aldar magnetised pieces and all of their bases just in one. Yes, it's all loose, but I'm not too worried about these moving around just a little bit. And I've used this system for quite a few of those awkward miniatures. I've got my eight drop pods here for my Tyranids. At the bottom I've got my Tesseract Vault. Over here I've got two Doomsday Arcs and two Command Barges. I've got another box so I can have four uh, of each. And then at the bottom here I've got my six Night Scythes in the bottom with just, again, foam separating them. Okay, so next I want to show you my monoliths which I have in this box. And the monoliths are all safe and sound. What you hear moving is just the magnetised pieces in a box. So how did I do this? Well, I did consider putting magnets on the bottom of the bases, but it would have taken a lot. And the bases uh, come off anyway, so they weren't that secure. So what I did, actually I've got my TT Combat Pylon in here as well. Basically, I just put a foam a sheet at the bottom of the box. I made these little pieces out of the cases that I had from the other boxes, which goes just over the top. And the pressure, when I push this onto the top is only very slight, it's just a little bit of pressure just to hold the monoliths into position but without actually doing any damage. Here is all of their bases just wrapped up in bubble wrap and of course my TT Combat Pylon all in one box, nice and safe and secure. However, I did have a few more issues when it came to my Seraptic. And the reason for that is I posed his leg right up in the air and he was too tall just to, well, stand in this box. Actually, there was a couple of miniatures, in particular my Tyranids, where I had to break one of the arms off and just lower it slightly just to get it in the box with all of the others. So, yeah, I think from now on, whenever I'm doing conversions, I'm going to consider how tall they are to get them in my boxes. However, I did solve the issue. I've got my Seraptic and my Fordwell Pylon in this box. So this is how I did it. Got a foam sheet on the box from this old cases. And then I'm lying down the Seraptic on its side and I've got the Pylon, which isn't on its base because I, I didn't glue it onto the base, uh, just lying there. And then underneath the Seraptic, is the base of the pylon and that's sitting at the perfect height so that when I put the foam on the top and again the lid is the perfect height with that foam that I put in there not to squash anything but just to keep it all in place so that's another problem solved. However I did find that well some problems just couldn't be solved. In here I've got my six Aldar Grav tanks and also a load of my jet bikes and my converted Seer Council. It was just easier, smaller space, etc. just to keep them in this case and that's what I've done. I've got the three layers, they're all safe and sound, I've always kept them this way and 
well I did try to put them into those boxes but it just it was better just to keep them in their original case so that's what I've done now also I've got my Dark Eldar army still in its original case now the silly thing is this is my least favorite case out of all of the Games Workshop cases that I got the actual case is okay but I hate the innards the way when you pull the innards out it all drops out everywhere however it fits my entire Dark Eldar army perfectly. I do not plan to expand on this army and the box itself is actually pretty small. So in the end I decided I'm just going to keep my Dark Eldar army in this case. I don't really play it enough for the issue of these foam inserts being a problem. It's more for storage so I've kept it in this case rather than transferring it to the magnetized boxes. Okay, so there you go, lots of information there for you. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments box below. Now here is the green stuff video I was talking about earlier for you to check out next.